As the demand for freshwater grows across the globe, more and more people are looking to the world's vast oceans and seas as viable sources. It's not that difficult to desalinate water using reverse osmosis. What's hard is making the process energy efficient and, in turn, affordable. IEEE Spectrum got a chance to check in on the current state of the technology at the Pembroke Reverse Osmosis Plant on the island of Malta. We do not um, get the water directly from the sea, but what we actually do is that we dig boreholes around the seashore and pump water from the, from the borehole itself. In effect, the coastal gravel is acting as the first filtration stage. In this way, we avoid many unwanted objects like dead fish or seaweed. So if we have a look over there, we have a number of borehole pump rooms, the small grey rooms, which are pumping water through the silver pipeline and into our plant. As the seawater seeps into the boreholes, it picks up iron from the Maltese rocks. Sulfuric acid is added to the seawater to make the iron more soluble, and then the water enters the plant itself. Once inside, compressed fiber filters remove the iron and other minerals. And the water is uh, meeting these compressed fibers, and the suspended particles are being filtrated by this, by this material, and the clear water pass through the filters. At this point, the water is basically clean, but still salty. So just after the, the, the seawater passes through the cartridge filter, it is being transferred to this high pressure pump. A 6 keV motor drives a high pressure pump, which pressurizes the water to 70 bars. So one bar is, is enough for water to, uh, to rise uh, 10 meters. So 70 bars, uh, uh, the water would rise 700 meters. This high pressure water next goes to arrays of reverse osmosis membranes. Inside these tubes, some of the seawater gets forced through a membrane that is impermeable to salt. The remaining water becomes more salty and leaves the system. The plant uses a combination of different membranes. The older models are full of hollow fibers that allow fresh water to flow through the end cap of the tube and wastewater to exit the center. The newer models use a spiral wound design where fresh water flows to the core of the tube and wastewater exits the end. The major factor of the energy consumption is taking place by means of this uh, high pressure pump. So it makes sense to try and recover as much energy as possible from the still highly pressurized wastewater. Traditionally, this has been done via pelt and wheels, but recently half of the plant has been upgraded with these pressure exchangers. These purely mechanical devices use the outgoing wastewater to directly pressurize the incoming seawater. That makes them much more efficient, an effect that's easy to see when you compare the pumps on both sides. If um, before the upgrade we used to consume 5 kilowatt hours per cubic meter, now we are consuming 2.8 kilowatt hours per cubic meter. The other recent improvement to the Pembroke plant is the installation of a new SCADA system that plant managers use to optimize the production. Okay, this is the, the new SCADA system that we um, are using at the moment. Pembroke generally runs at about 30% capacity, so it's worthwhile to do more processing when the water is less salty or warmer, two conditions that lead to greater efficiency. For now, reverse osmosis provides about 40% of Malta's fresh water. But as the underground aquifers increase in salinity, the Water Authority will need to make the process even more efficient to keep water prices from rising. For IEEE Spectrum, I'm Josh Romero.